Are you constantly the defender in Protoss vs Terran, always on the back foot, and stuck defending Terran harassment from multiple angles? This can be a frustrating experience, and frankly, tilting. If you're looking for a way to get back at the Terrans, taking map control and punishing their greed, then this video will be perfect for you, as it'll go over an aggressive style I have found being played by the pros. The most recent GSL champion hero is our savior. He brought an aggressive and tempo-based playstyle to that GSL finals and beat preparation master Maru. I then decided to look at all the replays of Hero I could find, and I found two from a series he played versus Clem that delivered a straightforward game plan we can all learn from. So jumping in right into the first game, we have Hero versus Clem. The map is inside and out. Uh, this was played at Dreamhack Valencia. And the first thing that we'll notice that Hero does, it's very important, pay attention, it goes 13 pylon. So not 14 pylon. He delays this 14th probe for a very long time, takes an economic hit, but the reason is he wants to get his gateway down as quickly as possible. He wants to get his cybernetics core down as quickly as possible. And then his stargate down as quickly as possible. So he goes 14 gateway. Then chrono boosts will take his gas. Very clean build order. But you have delayed a probe or two with this. So it's already not as economic. After you take down the gas you send this probe out to scout. Nice and simple. And at the same time you then rally a probe, your next probe to build, the second gas geyser. Very, very simple. Now gas management is important. I will say, you know, usually we say don't go below 16 workers, but because we've delayed one or two workers, we don't have that luxury. So never go below 14 workers on minerals. So he pulls one off, rallies the next one in. He'll pull another one off, I believe, and put it into the next one and then rally into there as well. So as soon as the gateway gets down, immediately build a core. This is vital. You also just need to make sure that wherever you're proxying, I mean, you could proxy closer if you want, you could proxy right here, proxy up here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend proxying down here because then you have to go through the natural. Uh, so proxying in the direct line of the main tends to be the way you go for stargates. But make sure you get this pylon down regardless of where you're building it uh, before the core gets to the halfway point. Core takes 36 seconds to build and a pylon takes 18. Uh, and so you obviously want to be able to build the Stargate as soon as the core finishes. So as long as this pylon is down before the halfway point, then you're all set. We'll see that he doesn't go below 14 workers on the main base and rallies the rest into gas. And then he'll rally back onto minerals. It's also building a Zealot. And this Zealot is meant to just delay Clem. You know, if it ever gets across the map and he's taking a low ground expansion and the Reaper or the Scout never comes, this Zealot can get a lot of damage done. So uh, it's a great aggressive play. It also helps deal with any eBay blocks. Core finishes, he immediately starts an Adept and a Stargate. Very, very important. And then, importantly, he does not start Warp Gate. He does not start a second Adept. In fact, the next thing he'll get is a Natural Nexus. So he'll be going down and pull the worker very shortly for that. Nice and simple. Zealot uh, does get across the map. We did miss it, but the Reaper walked past uh, to kill a probe. So the Zealot actually gets all the way across the map. The Zealot is not important. You don't expect it to get much done. It probably will just die. And in this case, Clem reacts really, really well. So, you know, he's building a bunker. He micros SCVs like a god. You know, this one takes a hit, I think. Or well, this one does. Uh, but he just micros it around. So the Zealot doesn't get anything done, but that's totally fine. Behind this, he has the Nexus going down. He's going to start probe production again. So it's important to remember that the order goes... Zealot, Adept's uh, Oracle, right? Very simple. And then Nexus, Adept, second Adept, which we'll see start up right here. And then Warp Gate. That's the order. It's a very delayed Warp Gate. The Adept goes straight across the map, and I mean, Clem's perfectly prepared, but he gets to be able to have a really nice scout off, and he sees a factory with a tech lab. It's never going to be a tank this early on, so he knows it's a cyclone. So in fact, in this game, Hero makes uh, the perfect choice of instead of sending his first oracle in let's see he could send this first oracle in right now it would go onto the mineral line it might kill this first marine but when the cyclone does pop out and he knows that it's a cyclone his oracle is going to go here and there's nowhere for it to run on this map it's not like he can go behind the base and get it to safety so instead he's not going to send it in he's going to pull up until he has two oracles which i think makes a lot of sense so he just waits i mean he definitely thought about going in now as the Nexus is reaching three quarters done. Or just when you have 300 minerals, you're going to add two more gateways. Nice and simple. 
you do have delayed economy. So these gateways might feel a bit early. You know, usually we have like eight workers. Uh, but because you're not building workers on the natural nexus, you can actually afford these a bit early. And you're going to be getting nice and aggressive very soon anyway. The Reaper's alive. You can keep an Adept at home. That's very important. Now he's going to go in with the second Oracle. Of course, he's starting a third one. And immediately just jump on the Cyclone. Now, if there was no Cyclone building, you would just jump on the Marines. Or you'll just jump on the SUVs. Whatever damage you can get done, that's very important. Now he's about to run out of energy, and the next Cyclone is going to come out. He knows this. So instead of sacrificing an Oracle for, you know, another SCV kill, Clem reacted really well here. He just pulls back, and I think this makes real, uh, a lot of sense because his third Oracle is about to pop out. He'll be able to go back in. He killed one Cyclone, so it's not like there's going to be two Cyclones sitting there for him to have to deal with. Behind this, though, he starts his Twilight Council. So essentially, as soon as you get 100 gas, if you're deciding to continuously build oracles, you get Twilight Council down, and it's going to be for Blink. And you're going to be very, very aggressive with the Blink Stalker follow-up that Hero does in this game. Now, in terms of uh, I guess, in terms of economy, I'll just talk about this now so we don't have to touch on it later. He's going to go up to 16 on Minerals and 3 on the Gas, and then no more probes after that. He will take a third Nexus, and as the pressure goes on, he'll start sprinkling, sprinkling in a few more probes. But getting up to, you know, 42 workers is the main thing. 16 on the natural, 3 on the gas, 16 in the main, 6 on the gas. And you'll notice as well uh, that he'll send a probe out to proxy a gateway. So it's going to be a 4 gate link follow up. Now he has 3 alcohols out, he's going to jump back in. Kill some marines. Unfortunately, Clem has a really good positioning uh, on the cyclone. So he'll still lose it, I believe. Which is important. He doesn't get many kills. Just two workers. And so you're probably thinking, well, Clem is only behind three, or now four workers, right? Which in this state of the game is actually really, really good. But he's lost two Cyclones. He's lost a bunch of Marines. He only has three Marines at this point. So there's no possibility for Clem to ever get out on the map and attack Hero. So what is Hero able to do? He's able to take Nexus in this case. He felt, yeah, I've done en enough damage, killed enough units that I can take a really quick third Nexus. He's not even going to spend a lot of, you know, workers on, on this base. He's not going to spend a lot of time saturating it. Just enough early on. Because he's like, okay, I'm going to get a third Oracle. I've killed two Cyclones. Done a lot of damage to his army. Third Oracle is going to be great. So he's always just been constantly aggressive. If he gets damage done, if he loses an Oracle, yeah, let's just replace it. Oracles are always going to be worth it. So he finally gets uh, Blink started. He's going to start warping in Stalkers at home. And he sends a probe out to proxy a gateway. Now this can be at the Stargate, but if that gets discovered, you could build another pylon here and a gateway here as well. So now he has three oracles. Uh, I mean, if we look at workers' damage, he's only killed four, uh, but he's done a lot of damage to the army, and that's what I really want to reiterate. Goes in, he sees two cyclones this time, still a madman. Three oracles are great. Kills both cyclones. He does, I think, lose two oracles. So you're probably thinking this isn't worth it. And I mean, maybe it's not. Obviously, you'd want to keep the Oracles alive. But he gets a few workers here killed. Kills some Marines. Kills the Cyclone, importantly enough. Which just... It stems any counterattack possibility, right? Look at Clem. He's stuck in his base. He spent all this time building Cyclones. Which is, you know, the perfect defense against Oracles, right? And even still, he's in a great spot. Now he's just building uh, Stalkers. This is the next part of the game plan. Four Gate Stalker with Blink from the proxy pylon, get really aggressive. And because, you know, once again, like I said, this is something that you have to weigh up. If you haven't done much damage, then it might be harder to probe up your third Nexus. But in this game, he's killed four Cyclones and a bunch of Marines. So he's pretty confident and pretty happy just to start building workers here. Makes a lot of sense. It's gonna blink up on in, I think, which is a bit ballsy. You see a Marauder, but Hero is just very confident in his Blink Stalker Micro. One thing that we'll talk about a bit later is how he micros and macros at the same time. Uh, but just very simple, as soon as the stalkers get to no shields left, he just blinks out. Now, usually with this kind of rotation, you, the first time you ever blink, you blink into the main base, away from anywhere tanks could be sieged. So that's the first place you blink. Try and trade out some marines. Then you keep warping in stalkers. You do another four stalker warp in, and the next place you hit, you hit the bunker in the natural. Because they often assume, ah... Oh, I have a bunker, I'm safe. Instead, no, just blink straight on top of it. You'll shoot it down in three shots, even if they pull SCVs. It's like really worth it, right? So this is just like the four gate warp prism that you would see 
uh, with Blink Stalkers that Parting used to do. But instead of the Warp Prism, you have an Oracle and a Proxy Gateway, which makes a lot of sense. Now, this game, you know, Clem does okay, but here is in a great spot, right? He's delayed so much, he's been so aggressive, cleared out so many units that there's only eight Marines, two Marauders, and some Medivacs. You know, there might be some more Marines back here. But what does Hero have? Well, he has a fully saturated third base. What he should be doing is going up to eight gateways and charge right now and clearing up any counterattack. Now, Hero is a bit crazy. So what does he do instead? Which, uh, this is totally a viable thing to do. Uh, but just because he got so far ahead, I wouldn't recommend doing this in all cases. He's added a fourth gas. He has a dark shrine. And he's even going to get DT Blink. Uh, if you want to keep it more simple, just go up to eight gateways, get charge, build some immortals, which is essentially what he does in this game, but he, he spends a bit more time building DTs, which I don't necessarily agree with. So there we go. Some gateways being added. It's a hectic game, but he still tries to go up to eight. Uh, and he even keeps warping in stalkers. So the, what happened here? We can just go back really quickly. What happened here was he saw this army was pulled across the map. And he was, you know, kiting as best as he could. He warps in four more Stalkers. The reason why four is a great number, it one-shots SCVs. So you can get a lot of damage done if the Terran has moved out, moved all his units out. But yeah, so Hero, I mean, he's got himself into a very happy position this game, right? Just trying to be as annoying as possible and aggressive as possible. Hero goes on to win this game, but I want to jump into another style that he showed. Into game number two, once again, Hero vs. Clem from the exact same series. Uh, it went to game number five, so I'm not going to spoil the result of the series. It was a good one. I recommend you guys checking it out. Hero actually makes a mistake in this game. And, well, funnily enough, he was trying to, like, figure out where to build the pylon, his first pylon. So he wanted to go for a 13 pylon. I mean, this is a 13 pylon. But because he took so long to build it, it actually, he should have just gone 14 pylon. So he makes a mistake in this game. But it means if you make a mistake or you don't want to build 13 pylon, you totally can. You still just get this first gas, scout to go build a proxy, build the second gas, nice and nice and simple. Uh, I talked about it, you know, in the last game where we want to proxy on the map, so, you know, typical locations I think would be down here, this would be a perfect place for proxy Stargate. Uh, down here is okay as well, but oftentimes you do want to come in more from this angle, so over here makes sense. Hero instead decides on this side of the map. And I said, of course, you don't really want to proxy here because that goes across the natural. But up here is far enough away that you still do tend to go down this way into the main base. And as well, it's going to be probably the least likely spot Clem is going to look for a proxy Stargate. Now again, Hero does build the Zealot, but he's actually going to cancel it in this game, which is a difference from the last. If we look at what Clem is doing though, he went eBay block really early scout, so maybe the Zealot would have helped deal with the eBay. Cancelling it is okay. I would say that this is probably mostly just down to mind games, but Clem has then got himself into a really annoying position where he's had to go factory on one base. He can't build the CC on the low ground because he scouted the Zealot being constructed, and so this is just going to delay him and once again put Hero in a great spot. One thing that I will say is that this was not the first uh, proxy that Hero done in this series. He does other proxies as well. It's a good game where he proxies at the gold base and then takes the gold base as well, not proxy Stargate. So, yeah, Clem's a bit worried. It all plays into the mind game, uh, and being aggressive helps this. So Stargate has begun. Corona boosts out his first Adept. But the big advantage of not building a Zealot is that you can take a Nexus quicker. You know, it's 100 minerals quicker. So nice, simple. Uh, design there. Now, he's building a second Adept. He keeps his first Adept at home just for a little longer because he doesn't know if a Reaper is coming across the map, right? Because he doesn't know a Reaper is coming across the map, he leaves this at home to be defensive. When his second one comes out, or he's about to finish, he then sends his first across the map. Now, in this game, Hero does a different variation. And I think this does come down to mind games, but if you want to play this way, it's just a really great s style. And honestly, this seemed like the more consistent one. Uh, the one that we saw in the previous game was aggressive, but, you know, if you take a bit poor trade, you're probably a bit behind. This one is, is just really strong in and of itself. So he gets one Oracle and then immediately builds a Twilight Council. This actually is really quite good in this game, I think, just for what he runs into. 
essentially a delayed expansion. So committing to multiple oracles is really not going to be as effective. So, I mean, Hero doesn't even go across the map. He, he starts looking for proxies because he's confused. He hasn't seen a second command center. So he starts looking for proxies. That's all fine. But he's going to be able to go into Blink really quickly. And once again, as the Nexus is three quarters done, he starts two gateways. And then he'll start Blink. Obviously much quicker this game. Can be a bit hard to afford it with the gas count. Oh, that's totally fine. And then you'll remember that the game plan is simple. We start walking in Stalkers, and we send a probe out across the map to build a proxy gateway. Now, obviously, he can't build this one at the Stargate. It's a bit too far away, so he just builds a new one. As we can see, you just keep walking in. You go up to 19 on the natural, 3 on the gas, 16 on minerals, and then start to head towards taking a third base. You know, this is not an all-in pressure, but it's committed for sure but uh, the reason why it's so good a warp prism is really expensive and it stops you from taking a third base if you just go for an oracle and use the oracle for high ground vision and you proxy a gate then you've essentially saved all that money that you've spent on a warp prism obviously you spend a bit on an oracle but that has its own value uh so you can then still get that third base down at a very reasonable time now i was gonna talk about this let's just watch how hero plays this so he's going to shade into the natural, get some vision. Once he's ready to go in, doesn't look back at his base while he's microing, right? Which is typical. My multitasking doesn't exist. You can't look at two screens at once. And he's focused on microing. He does not look away from this screen, like, at all, right? He just micros his stalkers. Doesn't care about the adepts that he just shaded into the natural. Just micros. Make sure he keeps all of his stalkers alive. Had a bit of downtime there, so he could warp in on the same screen. That's totally fine. Now, he's, did you catch that? As he sent his command up to move it up here, where there's going to be no units, right? He's safe to do this. He, he creates downtime for himself, and this is very important. He then, this is on his camera, goes back and looks at his base, fixes up his rally, start charge, immediately back at the front. And again, he, he won't look until he gets downtime. And he creates downtime for himself. So he blinks forward, snipes the cyclone, doesn't get a great trade. Like I said, he blinked into the main base first once again, and then blinked back into the natural. So another tactic that you can pick up and remember. So now that he's running in the downtime, he's sort of posturing at this point. There's nothing really to do macro-wise. Warp in more stalkers, of course. Goes back into the main. He has downtime because he's waiting in this situation for his blink cooldown to come back. He's not going to push before then. So he goes back home, builds some pylons, another gateway, gets aggressive again, nice and simple. And he blinks. Once again, he has downtime, so he goes home, builds another pylon. This is how you multitask, right? You create downtime for yourself, and then get aggressive. And honestly, this game has some of the most insane hero micro I have ever seen. Just watch this. Like, I'm not this good, you don't need to be this good. That was okay. It gets even crazier, so uh, let's speed up until he goes in again. Again, he just builds more and more stalkers. Gets really aggressive. Never loses one because he's a god. Like, actually insane. He's essentially won the game with that one fight. But what he'll do is he'll go home. He'll start more gateways. Keep macroing, because eventually he wants to follow this up with some zealots, right? Nice and simple. Uh, but this aggressive Link Stalker style has been so effective this game. He just pulled Clem apart. Impressive. We look at Hero now. He almost has a fully saturated third base. He's gone up to eight gateways. He's getting charged. Also, the blink out that he does here is insane, I think. I will say you do have to be scared around Marauders once they have Stim. Insane blink. I don't know how he didn't lose a single stalker. Honestly, insanely impressive. But now he just adds some zealots. And honestly, I just really love how aggressive this playstyle is. He made Clem afraid. Making terror players afraid is always the best thing that you can do. Either by building multiple oracles, or by building a really quick 4 gate blink attack. Once he's done enough damage, or if he's delayed for long enough, he can come in with 8 gateways and charge. And this is essentially his game plan. Always be in the Terran opponent's face, and you can't lose. So if you want to see how Hero ranks against the greatest other players of all time, make sure to click this video.